You have the right to remain silent is a phrase that you may have heard if you've watched a lot of cop shows, or if you've ever been arrested, I guess. You might have also heard people talk about constitutional rights, or employment rights, or human rights. But what are rights? Kind of seems like an important question to know the answer to if we want to say that we have rights and that other people need to respect them. In the philosophy of law, there's one ruling model of human rights that's pretty widely accepted. It was discovered by Wesley Hofeld, so it's called the Hofeldian Analysis, and I will teach it to you now. It looks something like this. If you've ever studied any biology or you know anything about the structure of DNA, then this is going to be really, really easy for you. Because the Hofeldian Analysis is like the DNA of rights. In DNA, there are four nucleotide bases, G, C, A, and T. In the Hofeldian analysis, rights have four building blocks. Claims, duties, liberties, and no claims. And these are called the Hofeldian incidents. In DNA, guanine only bonds with cytosine and thymine only bonds with adenine. In the Hofeldian analysis, if I have a claim, you have a duty. So let's say I have a right to life. The structure of that right is that I have a claim on you not to kill me, and you have a corresponding duty not to kill me. Our next pair is liberties and no claims. If I am at liberty to do something, you have no claim on me not to do it. You can't impose duties against me doing that. So for instance, if I am at liberty to travel anywhere I like, you have no claim on me to stay where you want me to stay. Just like in DNA, incidents only bond with their corresponding incident. According to the Hofeldian analysis, every right can be broken down in this way. To have a right is to be in a relation to another person about some action. Always there are the three elements, you, the other person, and the action that you're both talking about. Kind of like a Christmas cracker, you're each holding an end, and there's a toy in the middle that's the reason you're both there. So that's the first stage of the Hofeldian analysis, but there is a level two. Level one dealt with so-called first order rights. Those are the rights you're probably familiar with. But some lucky people have second order rights. Those are the rights to change and tinker with the first order rights. So for instance, if you were the President of the United States, you would have the power to create or nullify rules that other people had to follow. That would be your second order right as President. And these are the rights that are really interesting, and it's important to know how they work, because they're the rights that the people who run your life have to mess with you. Like in the first level, this time we have four incidents, and this time they are power, liability, immunity, and disability. The best way to explain how they work is by looking at the military. So the captain of the ship can create duties for the crew. The captain has the power to create duties. The crew are at liability to have their duties changed. The captain can't give orders to the admiral. So the admiral has immunity. The captain has disability. Again, the incidents bond in pairs, just like DNA. Power with liability, immunity with disability. And that, boys and girls, is the Hofeldian analysis. Now, if you're very clever, you'll already have spotted that I used the word duty a lot back there. Like, if I have a claim, you have a duty. What's the nature of that duty? Is it a moral one or just a legal one? Because the question of whether rights can give you moral duties or whether rights are just a legal construction is a big, big debate. Well, the clever thing about the Hofeldian analysis is that whichever side of that debate you're on, you can still use it. Whether you think that the nature of duty with respect to rights is moral or just legal, you can still break down rights using Hofeld's technique. If you like, whatever the molecular structure of the four nucleotide bases of DNA is, it's still true that they bond together in the pairs that they do. Now, it's important to understand what the Hofeldian analysis is. It's not like a scientific theory where we could do an experiment and see whether or not it's correct. In fact, some people have argued that it's actually unfalsifiable, which in science is a dirty word. Hofeld actually defined human rights as having these relations and having these incidents. So if we want to know whether his idea was any good, we need to ask, is it useful for understanding the way we use and talk about rights? Earlier on, I said that the Hofeldian analysis is widely accepted, but not universally. 
Some philosophers like Honora O'Neill and Brian Kin Teng Ho think that it has its limits. They think that there are some rights which can't be broken down into that three-part relation with the two people in the action, the Christmas Cracker model. We'll have to go into the specifics of their ideas another time, but Brian was actually one of my lecturers in the philosophy of law, so the cutting edge of legal philosophy, even though the Hofeldian analysis has stood for almost a century, might be about to tell Wesley Hofeld to jog on. Shut up, Wesley! What do you think? Is the Hofeldian analysis useful for understanding the way we talk about human rights? Are there any rights that you can think of that don't fit Hofeld's model? Thanks very much for watching today. Don't forget to leave me a comment and I'll go through some of the best ones next time. Philosophy Tube is paid for largely by me out of my own pocket, but also by my patrons on Patreon. So big thanks to this month's top donators. Jesse Austin, Intimidating Scones, DJ McIsaac, Lydia and Nate Thorne, Jeffrey, Emiliano Haynes, Glenn Murphy and Horatio Cordero. Thank you so much all of you for your generosity. Everyone else who donated, your names are in the description. If you'd like to donate to the show, I would really appreciate it. You can earn rewards by doing it. If if not, I totally understand, that's totally cool. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye!